Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jamie and today I'm going to be making a video all about how to edit your Instagram pictures in Adobe Lightroom because that is what I use, that's what a lot of other people use whose videos I've been watching so far. It's super easy, super simple and very fun. Like I have had so much fun just flipping the thing on and off. If you've edited your photos in Lightroom before, you know what I'm talking about. But we're going to get into how to make your photos look like this from this. So keep on watching if you want to find out how to do that. Also, if you're new here, I make videos on lifestyle, sustainability, and mental health. I actually just started a mental health series and I did an episode on anxiety the other day, so I will link that playlist down below in case you guys want to watch it or you have a friend who you think could use it. One quick thing I do want to say before we actually get into the video is that I did not know how much I would absolutely love editing my photos. When you get into it, it's so fun to just keep taking pictures and editing them and changing the hue and changing the saturation and all that stuff. When I first got into college, I went mainly for video editing. There was a one person little interest thing in me that was like, okay, maybe, maybe one day I'll get into editing photos, but definitely not today and now that I have Lightroom I am so into it so if you guys are super hardcore video editors and you want to maybe step up your photo editing game just keep on watching Okay, so the very first thing I do after I take all my photos, and just a little disclaimer in case you guys aren't aware or you do want to know exactly what I take my photos on. So the camera I'm actually recording with right now is my Canon T6i, and I have had that for like four or five years now, I think, however long I've been making videos. And I love to use my Canon T6i in order to take photos because personally, I just think that it's better than my iPhone, and I do have a pretty good iPhone. I have the 10R, but definitely use what you want to use. The picture I have in the grass right here, that one was taken taken on my phone, but every single other picture besides the IGTVs, because those are mostly taken on my phone, every single other picture was taken on my camera. So that's just to give you guys a little insight into what I use in order to take my pictures. I have a little strategic way of figuring out when I want to stop my photo shoot because generally you don't know how long it's going to take to get the perfect picture and then sometimes you get like five perfect pictures in a row, which doesn't usually happen. For one of my recent sponsorship photos that I will also put on the screen right here, it actually, I don't know, it took me like five minutes. I went into my bathroom and I did it and every photo just turned out so well. So I have a lot of leftovers from that, but it's not like I'm really going to use them because it was a sponsored picture so we'll get into that at a different time. I will just sort through all of the pictures that I have and then I will figure out which ones I want to keep. On an average day of taking photos I'm probably only gonna end up with one that I really love and I'm gonna work all my effort into editing that specific photo. In some cases if you're lucky you will get a ton of pictures like the one I did for my sponsored post with Mary Ruth Organic. Sometimes you'll get a whole bunch of pictures like four in a row that you're like wow these would look really amazing and then sometimes you'll just get one so I will gather up all of my photos that I think are potential candidates for a good Instagram picture. And then I will airdrop them to my iPad, which is where I generally like to edit. You guys can edit on your phone, or I think there's a free version of Lightroom on the Mac. I feel like not a lot of people have Lightroom on their computer, so for what I do is I will take, this might have fingerprints on it, I'm sorry if it does. I take my iPad, and I have Lightroom on here, and I was actually editing something before, but I will just airdrop it to myself on my iPad, and then if you're editing on your phone, you can also just airdrop it, and that way you have all the pictures that you think could be good for Instagram in the place that you want in order to edit them. This step is the most important part of figuring out how to edit in Lightroom and it is the main reason that most people decide not to edit in Lightroom because they get intimidated by this and they don't want to have to pay. So I'm going to explain to you everything that you need to know in order to get past this and actually not have to pay for Lightroom but still edit your pictures to the quality that you want. I don't really know how to describe it but there's this problem that everyone encounters when they first use Lightroom so I'm going to show you guys how to fix it and how to never have it happen again. So pretty much when you go in there, I'm going to start screen sharing on my iPad so you guys understand because I edit on my iPad so it only makes sense. A couple weeks ago, I took a photo shoot and I have this picture right up here. And if I want to go edit that completely raw, unedited image in Lightroom, I go to the top and then I, well, the top being the three dots, and then I click add photos from camera roll. And then you see that it's a raw image. So you click raw image. And then when you go to edit it, it doesn't let you. So what I always do, just to avoid having to even think about buying the premium version, I always go and edit it down. And then it becomes not a raw picture, which is really stupid. I don't know why Lightroom does this, but that's just how it is. What I do is I take a screenshot of the picture that is technically raw, and I make it not raw by having to crop it. And I don't know why right Lightroom. I don't know why Lightroom makes you do this. It's really annoying and I wish there was a way to get around it, but I guess they also just want you to buy the premium version. So there we go. This is our new picture. Now when we go to Lightroom, 
Ha ha, we have that picture. And guys, watch this. So my preset, as I've said before, is from Julia K. Christ. And all you do is you tap the little circles, the category will say presets, and then you just press it, and whoa, there is your preset. To take the preset off, and then on, and then off, and then on, and it's so fun to mess around with it because you know that the preset looks so much better than the actual photo. And then once you do that, you press done. And then after you press done, if you still wanna make some changes, which I usually do just because I feel like if I really want my picture to turn out really well, it's gonna take a little bit more than just adding a preset. So what I do is I click light, and then I go into color. What I do at this point is I click color, and then the little wheel, you go there, and then you can change the hue. So if I want that red to be super bright, I can make it really bright. But if I want it to look somewhat orange, I don't really know why I would do that because that's not really my color scheme, but I can make it look orange. So for this, I wanted the red to pop out, so I made it really bright. For the orange, I don't really see, eh, it's doing some stuff to my hair, but actually, you know what, for this picture, I do remember I took the hue down a little bit so I could make my hair a little bit more bronze than it is because I don't know if you guys can really tell on camera, but I did dye my hair recently, and if you look kind of here, it's a little bit more blonde than it is brunette, but if I wanted to make it stand out even more on Instagram, I could totally do that and just make it look a little better than it actually does. Yellow doesn't really do much, I guess, besides the trees, so it really just depends on your theme. If you want that more, um, I don't know, if you want the more light green tone, but if you want a really super bright green, you go up, and it all depends what you want to stand out. When I show these pictures to other people, sometimes they will say that they like it when the green pops out, but for me personally, I want myself to pop out as much as I can in the photo itself, and I feel like if the green already pops out, then it kind of takes away from me being the main point of the picture. So sometimes I like to just keep it at the light green. And then you go in and do that with pretty much all the colors. See, that looks really cool. But then if we do this, this is more my theme. So sometimes you have to really figure out what you want the mood of the picture to be. And then sometimes colors don't really do much. See, I'm changing this from negative 100 to plus 100 and it's just not doing much. So we can click the back arrow, which is right here, and you can just leave it how it is. So once you're happy with that, you can click the check mark and then go back there, press share, export to camera roll, and now we have our completed and edited photo in the camera roll. So this was the before and this is the after. Real quick, I just wanna talk about presets and how to get them. So if you are looking for a preset to buy, I would definitely do it based off of someone whose feed or theme, is that still even a thing anymore? I would 100% recommend getting the same preset that they use because if they have that same preset on every one of their pictures and you use the preset that they use, that means your pictures are gonna have the same kind of look as theirs. Now I know a lot of YouTubers, like I know Sadie Aldis is thinking about doing a video on that. I'm not sure if she already did. Um, I don't think she has, but I know Adeline did a preset video. I think it's so funny because if you're watching this, you probably know that Aspen Ovard is kind of like the queen of the Instagram feed and her pictures, they always just line up so nicely. My biggest recommendation when looking for a preset that you do want to buy it or you do want to somehow figure out a way to not buy it, you can also do that. My friend Kelsey, she has a podcast, I'll link it down below, but I was talking to her about presets and she said before she made her own preset, she would actually just find free ones on the internet. So that is also something that you could do. What I really strongly would recommend you to not do is don't buy a preset just because it's your favorite person's feed, if that makes sense. Don't buy it just because Adeline has it and you love Adeline. And that was the main mistake that I almost made because when Adeline came out with her presets and she had a whole video on how to edit her Instagram pictures and she included her presets in there along with some little doodles that she made, they were all meant for people who have yellow feeds because we all know that Adeline is like 50% yellow in every single picture. And for me, that's just not the case. I like to do pink. That's why I follow Julia K. Chris because her entire profile is mostly just pink and blush, and that's exactly what I am going for. So that's one thing to just keep in mind is that when you are looking for a preset, get one from someone whose feed you actually admire and you could see yourself using that same exact preset on your own feed because just because I like Adeline's feed does not mean that I want that feed on my actual profile. I don't like the color yellow as much as she does and if she's incorporating it in a lot of her pictures, chances are I don't do the same. Get a preset that you're going to enjoy but not just because of the person who's selling it. And then real quick, I just wanna talk about ways that you can get presets. I know for a lot of presets, you can just get them on Etsy and that is also how Julia K. Chris 
sells her presets. You can get presets on Etsy. I know um, you should be careful if you're looking for Aspen's presets because I actually looked her up on Etsy the other day and there were a lot of people kind of trying to impersonate her in a way, like saying that they were selling Aspen presets, but they weren't actually. So just make sure that when you get them from her, maybe do it from her website if she has the presets on her website or make sure that they look real and that they are official because you don't want some fake Aspen Obar preset. So that's my advice for you if you're looking to buy your own presets. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun planning it. And if you do want access to the preset that I use, I will for sure leave it down below as well as Julia's video. Honestly, just search Etsy if you want to try to find a cool preset and I know Ava did a video on this too. I was actually, that is the one that I was registering when I said before that a lot of YouTubers use presets. Ava has a whole pack of presets that she uses for different places. So I think she has one for the summertime at the beach and then for winter time and you can totally do that. But right now I'm just concentrated and focused on using that one preset for everything. So you do you, if you want to buy multiple presets or a pack, go for it. But if you also want to just buy one and use that on every photo, also do that. So all depends on what you guys like. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. That way I know to make more content just like this and I will see you guys on Tuesday. Yeah, I'll see you guys on Tuesday for my new mental health video. Bye guys.